Hi, I'm Dr. Nick and I'm going to talk about how to make bar charts in Google Sheets. And this is specifically aimed at teachers, but other people can learn from it as well. You might wonder, why are we making bar charts? Well, bar charts are usually the best kind of chart for category data. And this is a picture here of the graph that we're going to make in this video. Category data is data that just has specific categories, like dragon species, there are two categories, dangerous breath, four categories, or behavior, three categories. You might wonder, why are we making bar charts on Google Sheets? Well, part of the statistical inquiry cycle is the analysis phase, and during that phase we need to explore the data using graphs. We can draw the graphs by hand, like the one on the left, using little x's, or we can use computers. And then when we get to the conclusion stage, when we're trying to communicate our results of our analysis, then we do want to have neat graphs, and we don't want to have children spending lots of time making graphs, so we can make them better in Google Sheets. The first step in making a graph is to make a data table which summarises the number of things that you've got that you're going to draw a bar chart about. This is a screen capture of me making a Google Sheet, okay, and this is the Google Sheet we're going to make the chart in. So the first thing to do is name your sheet, so I'm going to call it something sensible. In this case, I'm going to call it Dragon Breaths. And then up in the top left hand cell, I'm putting the name of the data, really, so dangerous dragon breaths. And then the next four cells down are going to have the different values that the dragon breaths can take. So they, a dragon can have breathe fire, acid, ice, or nothing. And then next to that, I've got the number of each kind of dragon. So we have five fire breathing dragons seven who breathe acid, three who breathe ice, and six that breathe nothing. Then all we have to do is click on Insert and Chart. And voila, we have a chart. It just needs a little bit of tidying up though. So in this next slide, I'm going to go through how to tidy it up. Just the basics really. First of all, you need to look at what's showing already. And so you can see this is where our data comes from, which is column A and B and rows 1 to 5. And you can see here that it's using row 1, which is dragon, dangerous dragon breaths as the header. And then it's using column A as the labels. And those labels are on the x-axis saying fire, acid, ice and nothing. It's all rather magic, really. So now we're going to customize. So you click on the customize and click on the chart axis titles. And we're going to change the title. We're going to put a sensible title in there. All charts or graphs should have titles. And they should be very um, expressive. So this one's saying dangerous breaths in my dragons. And it's left justified. I'd rather have it centered. So I'm going to align it to the center. Nice. Next, I want to change the color of the graph. So I go to series and I go to color and I'm going to make it green because it's uh, green, red, green, yes. And then I need to get rid of this little square. It's actually the legend. Um, it really is a bit silly to have a legend when you've only got one color and it's not really helping very much. So in, instead of being position right, we say position none. And hey presto, it disappears. And then I realized we haven't done our vertical axis, so we need to go there. We could do horizontal axis, and you'll see that it says dangerous dragon breaths. It's already picked that up. And if you go to vertical axis title, you see there's no title there, and we need to say what's in there. So we say number of dragons. And it happily pops in there. So that's pretty much all we really want in our graph. It's well titled and so on. So we shut down our chart editor and there our graph is ready to go. And so we click on the little three dots in the corner. And now we want to be able to save our um, graph so that we can use it somewhere else. 
So you can see here, I've got the drop down from the three little dots and it says save image. So if I go save image, it's going to save as a ping and it will download to the downloads part of your computer and you'll need to rename it and save it somewhere else in order to be able to insert it into something other than a Google document or Google slide. Or if you use copy chart, you will be able to paste it, but you can only paste it into Google Docs or Sheets. And that's fine if that's what you're working in. So then when you go into the Google document or slide, then you've already done the copy You've got and you go paste. There are two different ways you can do it. One is where it's linked. And that means if you change something back in the Google sheet, then it will change in whatever document or slide you're in, which is sort of useful, but can, yeah, I, I would hesitate to do that. Or you, I would tend to do this, which is to paste unlinked, which means that it will just transfer into your slide or document and it won't change ever, really. So that was creating bar charts in Google Sheets for teachers. If you found this, this video useful, it'd be really good for us to leave some, something nice in the comments and do watch out for some more videos. You can subscribe to our channel or have a look at our website for some more resources.